Hello YouTube, Welsh Gamer here, the Welsh Gamer is speaking, home of the Dragon X podcast with my buddies Iraq X and Microbox of X, and remember to hit that bell icon down below to stay up to date whenever I make a video. Right, uh, basically, um, news is a little uh, little quiet, and all, all the main news that has been and gone, uh, me, Microbox of X, Iraq X, and for a short period, Mr. Boomstick XL actually discussed it on the podcast that we did on Thursday, so be sure to check that out, it was a great show, we covered a lot of ground. But as of right now where I'm sitting, there's not a whole lot of brand new news. So I've basically, I've got a bit of a backlog list on my phone of things I wanted to discuss. Things that crop up, things that I want to touch on. And I put it on this uh, list on my phone uh, so I can go back to it at any time. But basically, um, this one, this topic in particular is something I've wanted to talk about and get my thoughts on for a few weeks now. Um, probably a good month ago, I'd say. Um, this news was recirculating. I say recirculating because it's not the first time this like little agenda has been pushed around the you know the mass media, and that is gaming addiction. Um, it recently got re-triggered and re-thrown into the limelight when it came to the news uh, outlets, especially where I live, um, due to Fortnite. Kids playing Fortnite. Um, as we can all agree, Fortnite is one of the most popular games. A lot of kids enjoy that game. And a lot of parents are worried about game addiction. It just sort of started this new trend of discussion um, about gaming addiction. Granted, that same discussion has sort of kind of like gone by the wayside now. But I just wanted to, even though I'm a bit late to the party, I just wanted to get give my perspective on gaming addiction. Because uh, I, um, I feel everyone's opinion is very valid on this. Um, but from from someone from a point of view of someone who has a kid of my own, I am a gamer. I run a gaming YouTube channel. One of my, my one of if not my favourite pastime is gaming. But I still have a, a fiance, a child, a house to run. I still like to think that while I make a lot of time for my games and I have a lot of fun with them, I'm also someone who prioritises certain things over my um, my uh, my hobby. I'll call it, and uh, and I just think that I can give a pretty good, um, you know, both, you know, fifty-fifty, both spectrum, both both sides of the coin on this particular discussion. Now, my main question is gaming addiction, and does it exist? Now, the answer to that question is, in fact, yes, it does exist. If you think you are tuning into a gaming channel, and I was just going to defend it completely without calling it out to a degree, then you're completely wrong. I'm straight as an arrow when I tell it as it is, and the answer to that question is yes, it does exist. But the re but the thing is though, while it does exist, I just wanted to say that addiction being the operative word can be established in literally any form. Any form. Like what is gaming addiction? Gaming addiction is someone who's addicted to playing games. But at the same thing, same time, <clears throat> that same person could be addicted to cigarettes or addicted to alcohol. Or if we're talking more like practical, like physical activity, they could that individual could be addicted to swimming, could be addicted to running, could be addicted to the gym. Uh, literally, the addiction basically in a nutshell means... Uh, and I'm not reading the official definition, I'm just summarising. But definition, in fact, is just when an individual can't be without said thing and gets anxiety and sometimes even depression when deprived of said said thing. So that is addiction for you guys. And for me to negate that there are individuals out there that, in fact, have this particular addiction when it concerns gaming would be very false. I've been there myself, Young, a youngster growing up. Even in my, even in, I'm I'm 25 years of age with a four-year-old son. I got, I'm, I've been, um, I've been uh, engaged for about four or five years now, <clears throat> and um, and I got a house, I got responsibilities, and even then, I've been addicted at a time. For me, it comes in peaks and troughs. I'm not 24-7 all year round addicted to one thing like some people. I just get really engrossed. So like for me, the last time I would say I had like a heavy addiction to gaming or specifically one game was when The Witcher 3 came out. Um, I was addicted to that. You, you pro If you even knew me on a personal level, you probably didn't hear from me for a solid month and a half. I just literally 
I had my headphones on, my blinkers on, my telly in front of me, and that was it. That's not to say I didn't stop to feed my son or change a nappy here and there, but I was glued to my TV for that game. Could you call that an addiction? Yes, I'd say that was, um, uh, you know, maybe even a mild addiction. Maybe, maybe nothing compared to some individuals when you when the word addiction is brought up. But that was my most previous case of gaming addiction. So I'm speaking from both sides here, from someone of level mind and someone who's been there on more than one occasion. <clears throat> But I think, like I said, gaming needs to be cut a bit of slack because a lot of people are quick to point the finger at gaming. And I don't understand why. This is something that I've been trying to defend um, for a few years now because it's not the first time this has come up. And I've always had the same sort of opinion on the matter. And that is this. Get, addiction can be established in literally anything. I've just mentioned a few things. But this is the thing. What is the difference between a good and a bad addiction? Now, I pose this question because it seems it's okay for one thing and not the other. Now, I'll give you a scenario. If you're a parent, but I'm just throwing a parent out there. This could be in any circumstance. It could be a friend. It could be a brother or a sister. But in this particular analogy, you are a parent and you have a young child, say, the age, between the age of like 10 and 11. You've got exhibit A. Your child of 10 and 11 won't get off his Xbox, won't get off his PC, his PlayStation, whatever system he's playing on, he won't get off it. Morning, noon and night, that's what he spends his free time doing. That is what the most people would probably establish as a, and quote, the fingers are out, a bad addiction. But exhibit B, you have same little Timmy, same age. Same scenario, except take the controller out of his hand and put a book in his hand. A novel. Let's just throw something really sophisticated out there, like Stephen Hawking, um, that, um, the, the story of time, whatever his, like, you know, amaz his novel was. Um, the history of time, that's the one. And that kid can't put that book down. Morning, noon and night, all that kid does is read that, say, that book. If you go into his bedroom, if, you, if he's downstairs, if he's in the lounge on the sofa... If he's outside in the garden, you can guarantee that kid has that book in his bloody hand. He will not put that book down. And that, what most people would consider to be, is, and the fingers are out again, and quote, a good addiction. Now, how, well, listen, right, you know, layman's terms, you know, speaking devil's advocate, I can imagine a lot of people would rather see a kid with a book in their hand versus a kid with a game in their hand. But... The, the bottom line is those two scenarios I just painted for you is exactly the same problem because it would call if, if, if said person is in fact addicted, which we've established is when the person can't be without said thing, the same symptoms will be residing in that person's brain, whether it be a, a anxiety, a depression, like, you know, if you if like the parent was to take the game away or take that book away, the kid would get withdrawal. I know I'm painting a pretty vivid picture here because that's quite an extreme case. But what I'm trying to say is I think it could be a tad hypocritical, hypocritical at times on what is OK for as an addiction. Now, that brings me to like my second point of this video that I really wanted to get off my chest on what is the real issue here in today's society. I've already established that gaming can, in fact, be an addiction and you have to watch out for the signs. You do. You have to watch out for the signs like anything, like anything, like any potential addiction. You need to make sure that this person, this loved one, this relative, this friend, whatever, is doing things in due course and is prioritizing, obviously, the more important things in their life and isn't getting consumed because that's when it's a downhill slope and it's an uphill battle. That goes for anything. I'm not picking on gaming. Gaming is one of many possible addictions. But what I'm saying is, what is the real issue here? Because the real issue, in my opinion, and this is something that people don't like to talk about because it would affect the convenience of their lifestyle. This is something that people seem to negate and let it go over their heads because they don't even notice they're doing it because it's become an extension of their right arm. And this is electronics. And now I don't mean computers and, and, and stuff like that. I mean, computers can, in fact, be an addictive thing. But I'm talking more of the mobile phone. And more importantly, again, more specifically, again, social media. 
The real issue is right under your nose, ladies and gentlemen. The real issue is there. Like I'm like, and this is where I'm definitely putting the defensive cap on when it concerns gaming, which is a hobby I love. <clears throat> gaming only affects a tiny, tiny portion of the world. If you really, add, you know, if you were to add, like, you know, get the figure of the world's population right now, and then deduct. 80 million, because that's how many PlayStation owners are out there. Um, you know, 40, you know, 30 or 40 million, which is how many Xbox owners out there. However many PC users, however many like Nintendo users, just to get a rough estimate here. If you've deducted that from the population of the world, and then assuming those people do have mobile phones and use Facebook, Twitter, and all that stuff as well, but let's just pretend they're not for a second. Whatever number you have left after deducting that large sum, which is your gaming community that's what you have left in terms of the amount of people that are day in day out on their mobile phones and i'm talking about people like not even raising their head at a family meal i've been there myself i've uh, not not me personally i've never done that for me a mobile phone for me is a tool it's not a necessity i use it to my advantage i don't let it use me there's a there's a video that i'll link in the description below and it talks about society being taken over by machines more specifically mobile devices and it's very 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 close to home and quite harrowing quite harrowing if you ask me because it, it's only going to get worse and this is why a lot of people tend to pick on like gaming because it's it's quite there in front of you if you're a parent or a, or a, or whatever or a brother or a sister and gaming isn't your bag and you look to your left and your son or your brother or your sister is just sat at a TV playing video games numerous hours of the day it's quite in front of you it's quite bold and out there and you can clearly see wait a minute this kid plays on that a lot but what that person accusing and pointing the finger doesn't realize is they've probably been spending that morning while their, their, their mate or their brother or their son is on the Xbox. This same person pointing the finger has probably been on his phone looking at celebrity Instagrams and Twitter feeds all morning. And they don't even notice it because it's that convenient. Mobile phones are everywhere. Gaming only affects gamers. Gamers, people who enjoy gaming which is a, a minority compared to the worldwide population, The va I'd say 98% of people own a mobile phone. And I'd say 90% of people <clears throat> are glued to their mobile phone. Because it, and, and you might be watching this now, listening, and being like, no, 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 not me, not me. But it's true. It's, it's, it is very true. And I think the real issue is, Social media, mobile phones are the real problem here. People need to stop pointing the fingers at like hobbies and people who take their hobbies maybe a little bit too seriously and start looking at the real issue, which is society's fall under the weight of these mobile devices and social media. Countless hours people waste on Facebook. I And this is where I've been there myself. I deleted Facebook. For anyone, who, for anyone who is friends with me on Facebook right now, I have a private Welsh gamer Facebook account which I use to share my videos that is as far as I go with Facebook same with Twitter I have a private Welsh gamer Twitter account which I use to share my my YouTube videos that I use it to my advantage I don't let it use me but before this before my epiphany before I realized what was taking over the population kids were going to bloody restaurants with their families I seen it Two parents, an older son and two daughters sat next to me in my local harvester. And they didn't, We, me and my fiance were there for two hours, eating our food, conversing, having a giggle. And to our right, this family were there the same amount of time and they had not raised their heads once to com communicate with their family members. They were all on their phones, checking their Snapchat, their Twitter. And how is that not worse than gaming? Gaming for the most part, is 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 glue is pretty much locked in whatever your gaming setup is when you're outside or you go out to do stuff or whatever it's, it's out of your hands you can't do anything mobile phones are with you wherever you go but people waiting at bus stops people on the bus people on the train people chilling with their friends in a pub well a pint in one and their mobile phone in the other i have seen this guys and you cannot say you haven't seen it too and i'm just addressing that in my humble opinion People can point the finger at like, you know, gamers being like, you know, it being a problem.
but people fail to us fail to point out the real issue which is mobile phones and social media people are wasting countless hours scrolling through their timelines hours going by like I said, it happened to me before I realized what the hell am I doing? I wasted a whole day looking at other people's materialistic lives. Just a bunch of people who post their cars and their houses trying to be the next Kardashian. And it's like, that that, that is the real issue, guys. Facebook being a specific example is just full of people trying to fake it to make it. And you've got the average Joe, and like I said, that 99% of the population just spending hours looking at this shit. And then if they're not doing that, they're watching YouTube videos or they're watching Netflix on their phone. Everything's too convenient that people just don't see what the real problem is. Say what you want about old tech, like the old Nokia 2000s or whatever, but at least you could go on a bus Wait at a bus stop, get on a bus, get on a train, and you'd likely be having a conversation with the person to your left who you've probably never met in your life because that's what you did to pass the time. And that is what's called social interaction. And then one last defense thing throw out there about gaming. You can point the finger and say this person, little Timmy, all he does is play games. But nowadays with internet and Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, you are still socially interacting with people. While it be virtual, you are still... I've made countless friends via Xbox Live. One of my best mates to date, who I'll be going for the second year in a row with, to Eurogamer Expo, Microbox of X, I met him three or four years ago through YouTube. Watched a video, messaged him, he gave me his gamer tag, we started talking, we've been best friends ever since. He's, I class him as one of my closest friends... He lives across the Severn Bridge from me. I'm in Wales. He's in England. But we became friends through gaming. And we've met up in person and had a beer. All because of gaming. And the nights I've spent playing a video game, chatting about politics to like people like you know from all over the world, chatting about American politics, chatting about British politics, ch ch talking about sports, talking about games, talking about comics, movies... We're talking. We're at least socialising to some extent. But mobile phones, where's the social interaction? You could have 10 people to your right and you wouldn't even know about it because your head's so buried into your iPhone or Samsung because you're looking into other people's fake lives through Facebook and social media. Again, just to end the video, this isn't me saying there's no such thing as addiction in gaming or any form of, you know, hobby or, 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 or you know, any like kind of thing that someone can grab put in their hands or do actively I'm not saying nothing you know it can't become an addiction but while I'm saying that I want people to watch this video and realize that there is a much bigger problem here than gaming and I wanted to just give my opinion on the gaming addiction topic while also turning your attention to what I feel is the real issue and if you go into the description below there's a link to a video which I am very very fond of and it's basically in a nutshell talking about like it's about a five minute long video I think and it basically in a nutshell explains why mobile phones and social media is taking the taking society as prisoner and they don't even know it so that's all I got for you guys that thank that's all I got for you that is literally yeah, that is my that is my thoughts on gaming addiction and addiction as a whole um, why people need to stop pointing the finger and start realizing that there's bigger problems out there why people need to start playing devil's advocate and not just looking at gaming as this horrendous thing when you know, there's people addicted to all kinds of hobbies and stuff. There's people who spend every day, 24 hours a day in a gym. And that that that's not a good thing. But no one says anything. That's just one example. Anyway, that's the Welsh Gamer, home of the Dragon X podcast with buddy Xerox X and Microbox of X. And remember to hit that bell icon down below to stay up to date whenever I make a video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take it easy. It's the Welsh Gamer. The Welsh Gamer has spoken.